Taylor's stronger, but uh, you're right. Generally, we're down today, but not much. And this is a potentially important day for the market because two potential issues are going to be potentially discussed or being discussed, and that is Brexit and the possibility uh, of whether or not the U.S. might enter a recession in 2020. I think Mr. Powell is going to be asked that several times. So look at the market worries, what we've had, to, the wall of worry we've had to climb and the issues that are out there. Number one, an aggressive Fed. Well, we were all worried about that in December. That seems off the table right now. A trade war, acceleration, maybe that, but sort of seems very unlikely at this point. Now we're faced with the Brexit. Now we hear today a possibility of a delay or even a revote on Brexit may be in the works. Well, that would be a major issue uh, um, uh, delayed or off the table. And then the question of the U.S. recession, because that would impact, obviously, the earnings situation. Remember, economic data has been weak recently, and the Fed recently in its, uh, its uh, report on Friday implied that the trade wars were having some impact. So Mr. Powell is going to be asked, can you explain the recent spate of weak economic numbers? Tell us a little bit about that, what is causing that, and if the trade wars actually abate, will the data improve? If Mr. Powell says, yes, we think it will improve, well, all the people who are talking about earnings recessions, negative numbers, or, and believe the stock market's going to have a hard time, might have to stop those downward revisions. And all of a sudden, earnings revisions might move upward, say, in the mid-single digits. So all the people who are saying 0%, Earnings growth this year might have to go to 5% earnings growth. So a lot depends on whether or not you think some kind of recession is coming and the Fed thinks some kind of recession is coming and if the market levitates into believing that ain't going to happen, then the earnings numbers may be too aggressive on the downside. Change in the attitude, that's very important. Meantime, today, if you look here, retailers doing a little bit better. The, uh, the uh, earnings reports numbers this morning, not bad with the exception of Home Depot, but industrials and banks and emerging markets like China that have been real market uh, uh, advances in the last few weeks, a bit on the flat to the slightly downside today. The retailers, so Dillard's moving to the upside, AutoZone's up. Uh, you see Macy's to the upside, Home Depot's down 3%. But I want to concentrate on that buyback announcement because $15 billion is a lot of money. That's about 7% of the shares outstanding, the buyback they announced, if they actually reduce the shares outstanding. That's what we care about. Now, Home Depot is one of those few, uh, I call them buyback monsters. What's a buyback monster? This corporations that have reduced their shares outstanding by more than 25 percent since 2010. So we have 1.7 billion, now we have 1.1. They've reduced to 35 percent and they're going to reduce it another 7 percent with this buyback announcement if they go through with the whole thing. There's a small group of people, it's a few dozen out there that have been able to do this. This is just a few of them, but Northrop, Lowe's, Gap, IBM, Apple, this is all part of this buyback debate because if you keep everything else the same on the income statement, the bottom line is a company like Apple has reduced its shares 27% and that means that its earnings look better 27% even with no change in anything else, any of the fundamentals. And of course, that's one of the reasons buybacks are still very controversial. They're going on though. There's no reduction in the first quarter in buybacks here. Dow's down 98 points.